Hello everyone and welcome to patch 3.0.2 uh, Let's see what they changed. Uh, so patch 3.0.2 launched this week and big changes to the game. Quite a big changes for a non uh, number specific content patch for like a point one type thing like we'll call it a, a decimal not not a full decimal point type patch I expected these kind of changes in 3.1 but you know we're getting them in 3.0.2 which is kind of weird uh so they've changed quite a few things uh the biggest change that they have made is apparently they have fixed the input lag uh they haven't totally done it though they it does work better uh yavin and belsavis certainly work a hell of a lot better than they used to but it's not totally eliminated from operations uh, a lot of it was bug fixes certainly they said they had fixed the the underlurker the cross with the underlurker we don't want to get started on that cross oh we can make a whole rant on that whole cross thing but again it's not really bugging out it is more forgiving though you can fail it and survive now in story mode which is good but sometimes everyone's standing in the right place and it bugs out course uh, and it shouldn't uh, a lot of people are getting bugs where the cross would appear right after the f hide behind the rock phase I don't remember what phase that is I can't remember what he casts I think it's like devastating slam or something like that uh, but again you hid behind the rock to avoid the damage from it and then you got the cross phase where you needed one tank at the front one tank at the back uh, a DPS two DPS and a healer on the left two DPS on the healer on the right as you can imagine, for pugs, this will be impossible. Uh, most guild groups are struggling with this, and sometimes it bugs out because you're inside the cross, and the cross turns green if you get it right, or it turns red if you get it wrong, or it turns orange, which means, I don't know, sometimes it does turn orange. Sometimes it turns green and then kills a person, sometimes it turns red and nobody dies. The whole idea of it is... If you're in the right position, it should turn green and no one should die. The whole point of it is if you got it wrong, someone would be killed. It would just be a random person that would be killed. Uh, again, but it's kind of buggy. Because sometimes it'll kill you when, it, when it's green. Sometimes it would not kill you when it's red. Uh, some people have found just ignore it. But again, it's not really been fixed. Uh, the other big change is to HM flashpoints and the group finder. Now, all the uh, level 55 flashpoints and, to that extent, operations have had their comms nerfed, essentially. Uh, they used to reward Ultimate and Elite in 16-man. They now reward Elite and Basic. And if you do 8-man, they only award Basics. So basically, they've been downgraded. Uh, so the only way to earn Ultimate comms now is to do level 60 content. Uh, other, you know, conversely, the... Um, uh, level 60 HM flashpoints now award elite comms instead of basic comms, which is good. And the uh, bonus bosses have had their rewards adjusted, which is decent because those bonus bosses were really hard and they weren't worth doing for two basic comms, were just an absolute waste of time. So all the level 55 HMs uh, award basic comms now. Uh, uh, the level 55 ops now award elites and basics if you do them in 16 man. Uh, group finder now has a new section so you can do the old level 55 HMs, uh, you can do the old level 55 tacticals and you can do the new level uh, 60 HM flashpoints. Well I say new, the, the recycled level 60, the upscaled level 60 uh, flashpoints. Uh, also the ops, uh, I think they should just get rid of the operation in group finder. Ravagers and, um, what's it called again? Temple of Sacrifice. Ravagers and Temple of Sacrifice, uh, shouldn't be in group finder, really. I don't think they should be there. What they should do is just put the old operations in. Just put TFB, Scum and Villainy, you know, uh, Dread Fortress, Dread Palace. Put them in the group finder and give you... 10 ultimate comms for doing them because if you do do them you know you don't get ultimate comms per boss but just give you 10 I mean 10 ain't that much just for doing them rather than the what is it 16 that you get because the problem with group finder is no one's using it for operations there's very few groups uh, using it and then most of the groups I see are 8 man the story modes are just 8 man and I've only ever done 8 man 
Dreadful uh, Temple of Sacrifice and uh, Ravagers. I've only ever done the eight man version. Apparently, the sixteen mans are really buggy and they're really horrible. And I never, ever want to do the Underlurker in sixteen man. And there is no way you're ever going to do the Underlurker in a sixteen man pug because that is that is just a wipe fest waiting to happen. That is a wipe. Everybody quits. Uh, or maybe wipe. One person quits. Two wipes. Three people will probably quit then. And then the more wipes, the more quitters. It's basically scales. One wipe, one person quits. Two wipes, you tend to get two more people quitting, and then every wipe, the more people quit. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I don't think those ops belong there. Still don't think they belong there. Put the 55 ones in, and just uh, just let us do the weeklies. Because we get 10 ultimate comms for doing the Ravagers and Temple of Sacrifice weeklies anyway. And Temple of Sacrifice, pretty tough, that boss. The Underlurker and Sword Squadron are pretty tough. Uh, the other bosses aren't so hard in Temple of Sacrifice. Ravagers? Yeah, ain't so hard. You could pug Ravagers fairly easily. Uh, so the other big change is, again, a lot of things got changed for 16 men. Um... Temple of Sacrifice, they did change. Um, Sword Squadron it got nerfed, <laughs> which is a shame. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, they were just the damage of not so huge grenade, uh, rapid fire, and ground burst missile. So I guess it's pretty, pretty easier now. It was pretty tough in story modes, to be honest with you. It was uh, very tough. Uh, they've also fixed. Uh, they've also fixed the shields in uh, assault on Titan HM, which is good because that was hard as hell on the Republic side. That was a really tough first boss. What happened was. Uh, you get orbital strikes on you, and you get the ad spawn with shields, four ad spawn with shields, so you have to take the orbital strikes, get the orbital strike to land on the ad, and then move out of it, because the orbital strike will start channeling on you, and you you basically let it channel under the ad with the shield, and it removes the shield from the ad, and obviously you make sure you don't get hit by this. This is the hard, you would think this is the hardest thing in the world for pug groups to do. Take a shield, take an orbital strike to an ad, let the orbital strike fall on the ad, don't get hit. It's not that hard, to be honest with you, but yeah, DPS just can't handle that right now. Uh, so, not a lot else changed. Performance has increased a little bit. Uh, the biggest issue was, of course, uh, Yavin. Yavin 4 was horrible. People refer to it as Lagvin 4. It was just a horrible operation, a horrible planet, sorry. Doing dailies on Yavin. Uh, was horrible. The other change they did make to the dailies on Yavin is that now if you do all of the dailies and complete the weekly quest, uh, which is just complete eight dailies, uh, you get a full set of 192 gear for your companion. Uh, I don't think this was necessary to be honest. I liked getting the main hand. I liked getting the off hand. You got the the main hand you got from doing the uh, Forged Alliances story or from the Revan battle, the weekly quest for Revan. And the offhand you got for killing she who greedily devours on Rishi if you did that daily quest. So um, it's pretty pretty decent. You get 192 main hands. Uh, now you get a whole set of 192 gear. And it is a complete set. Implants, earpiece, every armoring. You don't get relics because companions don't use relics. But it is nice to get that. I mean, I don't think it was necessary to be honest with you. I mean, for most people who are raiding or are raiders... And I'm raiding, I've started raiding uh, pretty regularly now. I've uh, started uh, progression towards hard mode, not quite a hard mode yet. Uh, but I've downed Sparky and Malafar the Savage. Downed the first boss in each raid in HM. Uh, pretty tough. Uh, gonna need the six piece set bonus on my Scoundrel Healer if we're gonna progress further into Temple of Sacrifice, particularly the Underlurker HM. That one second cooldown on the one second off the cooldown of Colto waves is gonna be crucial in that fight. It's gonna be pretty crucial. I would say, but again, um, see the thing is, if you're a raider, you're gonna be, you don't need basic comms, really, what I'm trying to say is, you don't really need basic comms, because you're gonna get your full 186, you're gonna get your 192, you're gonna get your 192 set bonus, you don't really need elite comms either, to be honest, because you're gonna want the 192 set bonus, and then you're going to be into the ultimate comms. Obviously, you can maybe buy implants and stuff and fill in gaps in your gear with elite comms but the goal is to get ultimate comms the goal is to get the 192 set bonus that's the ultimate goal 
uh, get the 192 set bonus and then get into HM and then the goal is to get the 198 set bonus. You don't really care about any, there's nothing really to buy with basic comms. You don't care about elites and basics uh, when you're raiding. That's one of the problems and the amount of basic comms that you get, I would suggest just gearing your companion with basic comms. What was wrong with 186? The 186 you can better optimise because you can mod it at least. So some people complaining about that, that it's not optimised. Personally, I don't care. You know, who cares? Your companions don't raid. You don't raid with your companions. You don't have to be optimised gear. You don't have to cap their accuracy or whatever. Who cares uh, about your companions? As long as they're A, surviving the encounters and they're doing like reasonable damage, then you should be fine because there's no... There's nothing solo-wise in Shadow of Revan that's hard. There's nothing out there that's difficult. Uh, to be honest with you, you can actually solo the Flashpoint just by turning off the droid and just using your companion. I've done that so many times because that stupid GSI droids end up getting me killed. It seems that they've done something with the GSI droid on the first boss of uh, Blood Hunt, at least as well. I think they've done that with bugs, but... Still getting ability delay in ops, still getting frame rate drops in operations. Uh, that's one of the things I have noticed. They did break the mail server on the Red Eclipse and had to do a reset for it. So that was one of the things they did. But they fixed that the same day, so that wasn't too much of an issue. I haven't had any issue with mail ever since. Uh, a lot of the things, a lot of the uh, ability, the not abilities, but the uh, inventory items don't have borders on them anymore, which is kind of weird. It's annoying when you're trying to decide which stim is better, because you used to have like a purple border around it, and a, or a blue border around it, so you could tell the difference. Now I have to mouse over them, because I don't I want to put on just the blue stim and end up putting on the purple one. I'm like, ah, damn it. I'll put the purple one on. Although it does last eight hours, the purple one at least, so... Uh, that is kind of annoying. It's a minor bug issue, but I'm still getting frame rate drops in ops, still drops to under 10 FPS, and I've never really had this issue before with the previous ops. And this is 8-man we're talking about, not 16, so another reason never to try 16-man ops. So that is all really for the patch. Uh, there are, there's a new event with, uh, there's a new world boss as well on uh, Yavin, which I haven't checked out yet, so I'll get to that uh, at some point. Uh, you basically click a bunch of Sith entities, there's a thing that you need. I don't, I haven't really looked into that yet. I just tried out Yavin for the dailies, got my companion a set of 192 gear, and that was, that was basically as far as I got on Yavin. I don't really play on Yavin that much. I'd prefer to go to Rishi, because you could get the chests, uh, with the anodyne stims in them. They got the green anodyne stims, I prefer them, because you can reverse engineer them, and... You get the uh, the implant processor things, you get them as well out of there. So I always prefer Rishi to Yavin, so I'm rarely on Yavin. After I do the weeklies on day one, I'm never there again. I think I've found two Sith ghosts, in fact, I think you have to find them all again. And then you do a world boss, which does drop uh, some gear as well. I can't remember what gear it drops, it is a 16 man world boss hopefully it's not as laggy as the uh the revanite walker so that is all for this video thank you for joining me and i'll see you again soon and goodbye